Uh, good afternoon, uh, Craig Lopes of Moonsea Management Commission, and also with me today is Carmel Flynn, the Director of the Moonsea Management for Health and Human Services. Um, we thought we'd run through a couple of things. One is a summary of what is the, uh, the fires in the northeast. Uh, also a little bit about the new fire in the Bendigo area, and also where we'll be over the Christmas period. So, first I thought uh, just to give a quick summary. We've still got um, two going fires. Lake Rowan at Wangaratta, or north of uh, Wangaratta, been burning for a couple of days, still listed as um, uh, under, not yet under control. Uh, and we'd expect that to stay at that status until the weather conditions move through this afternoon, and hopefully they'll be able to get it to a uh, controlled position. It hasn't moved. The weather conditions have uh, been conducive to good firefighting, good ground operations, good air operations all day, uh, being able to, to do reasonably well in the control of that. Uh, the Longwood Crichton's Creek fire uh, is still burning uh, and is offering uh, a fair challenge to firefighters. So again, it's uh, heavily reliant on wind and uh, the local conditions this afternoon. Uh, hasn't um, extended itself too far, but is certainly being a challenge this afternoon. Uh, still confirmed there's been four houses uh, burnt in those two fires, uh, or the fires in the northeast. Uh, no one as uh, all people are accounted for, so no major injuries or obviously no death. Uh, power companies have done well to restore um, power to most properties, but there's still 116 properties without power. All of those are listed to have their power back on before dark tonight. Uh, schools are still closed, three schools, 47 students uh, are not at school and won't return to school um, this, the end of this year as school finishes on Friday. Um, the school students have been told clearly that those schools won't reopen this year. Uh, I think it's worth acknowledging the efforts of our firefighters. It's really important to emphasise that they're out there in the hardest conditions and it certainly was extremely difficult on Tuesday, uh, but are still uh, hard at it um, working with CFA, Deppey, Parks Victoria, NFV, and uh, they work in a strong, coordinated way to get the best, uh, best out of that. I'll now hand over to Carl to talk about some of the recovery issues um, that are occurring. Thanks, Craig. Well, we do know that it's a really challenging time for our communities up in the northeast of our state. And my department, the Department of Human Services, is working really closely with local government to make sure that those individuals and families who need support are receiving that support. So if you've been affected by a fire and need some additional support, then you can go to your nearest relief centre. And there are currently relief centres open at Yoroa and Wangaratta. At Yoroa, it's at the Wesley Hall on Berry Street, and at Wangaratta, it's at Bar Reserve on Schilling Drive. At Benalla, if you need support, then you can go to um, the Customer Service Centre at the local council. And if there are more fires, and there's a need for support for people in new locations, then more relief centres will be opened up as they're needed. At relief centres, there's a range of support that people can find. So there are agencies like Red Cross, the Victoria Council of Churches, and the Salvation Army, and their volunteers are there to assist. Some of the support that people will find will be uh, registration, personal support, information, water, food, and bedding. And for those people who have been displaced by the fires and can't return home, then there are additional supports available, and they can meet with departmental staff and there may be financial help available to assist them. Also, an animal welfare centre has been set up and is open at the Wangaratta showgrounds for both pets and livestock. And if people can't get to the showgrounds, then local government arrangements are in place and they can call their local government to find out where they can get more information. So we do know that communities who have been affected are helping each other. We know that relatives, friends and neighbours are providing support to each other. But local government and the state department and the state government is also there providing support to those people who might need it. Thank you. I might just take you to the Mai Mai fire. So the Mai Mai fire was a new uh, fire today. Uh, Mai Mai is a small town uh, near Reedsdale, uh, south east of Benigo, um, directly south of Lake Epilock. Um, Mai Mai, as a small community, had a fire yesterday that was started by a, uh, a tractor. 
and today we've had two fires start that have now been um, uh, contained uh, and contained with the use of aircraft and um, fire trucks. That's concerning in the sense that two fires started close to each other um, within a very similar time that's being investigated and we'd hope to think it's not um, the human hand, um, but that will be investigated to get a conclusion. I think one of the key things of the Mai Mai fire today was the large air tankers. Both large air tankers were dispatched from Avalon. Both did a fantastic job to actually contain the fire. One of the large air tankers put uh, over 15,000 litres of water, that's, that's 15 tonne of water, uh, in the front of the fire and stopped the fire progressing to burn a house, so that's a direct um, save for that house. And the se second air tanker was able to pick up the other side of the fire from it progressing into an area that fire trucks would not be able to access, um, therefore the fire would have run um, significant distance in the bush. So we see that as a, as a huge success about the, the use of our large air tankers. They're new to the fleet, they've only been released this week uh, into the fleet, they're new to Australia and there's something that, uh, that we see has been exceptional. They also worked with uh, three of our heli Halitax, uh, one of those being the Halitax out of Essendon, which is uh, the replacement for Elvis. Um, the large air tankers' names are RJ, so RJ did well today and so did Hercules. Uh, I think they'll be names that we get to know across Victoria during this fire season to be uh, friends to the Victorian community. Uh, from there, the other key interest uh, points this, this week is that 15,000 people have downloaded the Fire Ready app in the last three days. That increases now that we've got 680,000 people operate the Fire Ready app on their hand devices, their phones, in their hand to get information. We say well done to those that have downloaded it because it's the right time to download the Fire Ready app. It's time to download in the sense you need to know how to use it, you need to know what information's in it. It's got the ability to tailor information to the needs of you. And that is about setting up watch zones and getting information that's about what you need to make good decisions. So we, uh, we say congratulations to those that have downloaded it, more importantly encourage other Victorians to download the Fire Ready app into their hand, onto their phone, to make sure that you've got information that's available for you. Uh, in closing, it is important to acknowledge this week uh, school finishes. By the end of the week all schools will be closed, which means we're in the school holidays. Uh, we move into the festive season, Christmas, New Year, means that people are travelling on the roads to go to hol holiday locations. And in doing so, uh, we encourage everyone to know where they are in Victoria, take time to understand the fire risk of where you're going, um, but most importantly, make sure you understand the bushfire risk of where you're going to be on this holiday season. Enjoy your holidays, but just be attuned to the environment that you're in. Three things in a safety sense. Um, good road safety um, is, is upon us all. Uh, water safety for those that are on rivers, um, recreation, uh, waters and also beaches, and obviously also bushfire safety is critical. Um, we might ask for questions. That tractor you mentioned before, can, in that case, can action be taken against whoever was responsible? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, obviously, with fire restrictions in place, and fire restrictions are in all municipalities, uh, it, uh, it is incumbent on the individuals to operate uh, machinery and not to cause a fire. So police and uh, fire investigation will be dealing with that as they would anywhere in the state. Any fire that starts um, is, uh, is an offence, uh, and in particular those on total fire bans are even more so. So it uh, will be investigated and understood the cause of it, uh, and that will be determined by fire investigation and police of what action would be, would, would be taken in that, uh, in that issue. Um, the outlook, uh, the most critical day is this afternoon. We move into benign weather on Friday and Saturday, but we're back in the northern part of the state. Um, on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we warm up to be into the mid-30s, and uh, obviously with the mid-30s mid brings uh, in, in uh, a heightened fire danger. So certainly um, in western, uh, northern, central Victoria and northeastern Victoria, we're in the fire season. We're actually in there now, and it's only a matter of the weather conditions to change it. The difference is in Gippsland, there has been uh, rain and it has slowed a little bit, but the weather conditions that, are, that we will experience over the next week will dry Gippsland out and we'll see the start of January that Gippsland will be very similar to the rest of, of Victoria. So the critical parts at the moment are definitely Mallee, Wimmera, uh, central Victoria, 
northern Victoria and northeastern Victoria. Other questions? Yes, in in the uh, in the northern parts or northeastern Victoria, uh, it's in the high 20s, low 30s. So it's temperature, but the most critical thing this afternoon is wind speed, which will move the fires around and uh, potentially push them in areas that will be difficult to to extinguish. So it is wind driven this afternoon. With history and that, I mean these fires appear to start really early in the season. I mean, um, compared to, to previous seasons, how dangerous do you believe it will be? Um, all of the climate forecasts, the soil dryness, the fuel condition shows we're heading in, not only in Victoria but southeastern Australia, to a very serious fire season. Um, it goes back, and we've said it before, we didn't have September rains. We had limited rain in October, uh, very limited rain in November, and we've had some rain in, in December. One of the key factors is the soil dryness, and people might not understand the, how critical the soil, soil dryness is in, in understanding fire conditions. But the soil dryness is as dry this year as it was in 2008, which was obviously the pre-run to Black Sap Day fires. The difference, though, is we haven't had 13 years of drought as we did in 2008. But what we have got in some parts of the Victoria is uh, almost a mini drought. And when I say that, if you go to Wichitella, if you go to Wedderburn, if you go to Charlton, the small um, country locations that are north central Victoria, we are seeing almost a mini drought where farm dams are dry, uh, there is no runoff, so any rain we have, there's no stream runoff, um, which sees there's no replenishment of any of that water supply. So, in a mini drought um, with dry soil conditions, and now overlay it on a climate forecast to say it's going to be a very long, dry, hot summer, and we're already seeing that central Australia is extremely hot. So central Australia is where the heat comes from across the land into Victoria. That's the, the days that we'll get the strong, hot, dry winds into Victoria, and it's all coming from central Australia. So if you put those things together, we need to take this season extremely serious, uh, and we need to get Victorians to be attuned that fire is one of those risks that uh, we do need to take serious. And we don't need to scare people about it. We just need to be conscious and serious about fire in this state this summer. Um, the, the communities at risk at the moment are obviously um, those communities in the, in the bottom of the South Bogies around Crichton's Creek, Gurum uh, and around the Yarrow area. Uh, they are well worn, they're well informed and the highest risk communities were door knocked yesterday, yesterday by Victoria Police. There was about 120 properties door knocked to say that you're in the highest risk location if this fire was to burn out today. Um, well attuned, good community meetings. Um, those that have already been impacted to have actually uh, access to good relief and recovery systems. So we should be in a really good space in the Crichton's Creek area about information, but we still rely on people to access that information and be attuned to the conditions. Um, that's the highest risk this afternoon that we've got in Victoria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Arnold.